It's wonderful. We keep busy. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, with this amount of work, you need volunteers. You need people to get involved. And for the people that's watching by the way of TV or listening by the way of radio, give them, like, uh, directions. They can come and even get a tour of the facility and see the place. We have people come every day. Uh, we have tour buses that come in from Louisville, Lexington, Nashville, all over. Um, and when I say buses, I mean 50 passenger buses mm. come in, vans and so forth and so on. We have tour guys that give people tours all day long. Um, yeah, we, we have a volunteer program too, a VS program where we have um, young ladies who come and volunteer their time. Most of them are Amish and Mennonite girls, the volunteer girls, right. for at least three months. Some of them stay six months or a year. And um, that really helps on payroll when you have volunteer staff. And uh, we only have female staff. They live on the, on the property, and we don't have housing for men. So, uh, of course, most of our needs in the volunteer area is is women because of the child care and baby care and so forth. Mm -hmm. What about donations? How can people that's watching uh, get involved and donate to this and, and just help further this ministry? Okay, we are a, we are a, a, a total 100% funded charity. Um, donations, we're, we're not a licensed facility. Uh, we've been in, in business, if you want to call it that, and I guess it would be a business for uh, technically, since well, we about 1980, somebody said, you know, you could form a nonprofit corporation. And we didn't know what a nonprofit 501c3 was or anything like that. We were just a, a family with a lot of kids. Right. So we did do that about 1980, but we really started adopting children between 1969 and 1980. We adopted a whole lot of children, and um, so uh, to get started. Our, like I say, we're not state funded because we're not state licensed. Mm -hmm. and we will not be state licensed. And of course, in our early years, when our, our growing up years, we had a lot of toe-to-toe, uh, -to -toe, hand hand-to-hand combat with mm -hmm. the state, but uh, we prevailed and uh, we stuck to our guns. And now we have a lot of respect from the state government. And uh, we proved ourselves we're not somebody just come out of the woodwork lately, you know. Very good. But it took a long time to establish your credibility. That's not something that just comes along with it. You've got, you got to build that up and establish it. And so we live totally on donations, uh, totally. Um, the restaurant helps some in um, generating income, but there's a lot of debt at the restaurant. It's a big restaurant. We service about on average four to five hundred people a day. Mm. Um, just lunch and supper. We're closed on Sunday, but uh, it's called the Bread of Life Cafe. If any, you're ever out on 127 between Russell Springs and and Liberty, you need to stop in and get some good Southern cooking. Oh, that sounds good. So donations like uh, clothing items or any kind yes, of donations? Yes, clothing. Uh, we get a lot of clothes donated. In fact, we own a secondhand store in Liberty. We get so much clothes and other things donated that we, we had to do something to take the overflow of things that we get. So we we bought a, a Rite Aid pharmacy building that had closed because they built a new one. And we made that the Liberty Trading Post, and that's our secondhand store. But it's not like you think of secondhand store with just a bunch of junk laying around. It's all good clothes that are that are washed, uh, uh, steamed, um, hung up just like you would see in a Walmart or something. And uh, it helps get rid of some of our surplus, and it, it brings in a little income and provides employment for four or five elderly women at the at the store. But we take any all kinds of donations like that, uh, clothes, furniture. It's unbelievable the th different things that we do get. The cars, if you've got a car or truck you want to donate, we'll be glad to take it. Now, how does people get in touch with you to do this? They need to come down there? Or can they call? and or how? Call and get on our mailing list. We have a monthly newsletter that we put out. We have around close to 30,000 people on our mailing list. And uh, we put you on the mailing list uh, at no charge. And it's just a, a newsy new, um, uh, newsletter that comes out every month. And, uh, and 
of course, uh, once you get started and, and, and getting acquainted with us, you find out it's pretty easy to donate. Wonderful. Uh, tell us, tell you was telling me, now tell the people about some of the people you got working at the Bread of Life Cafe. You got all volunteers there, and one man has no hands. Well, they're not all volunteers there. We have oh. 50 employees at the cafe because of its size, its seats. All 150 people plus a banquet room, so it's it's a it's a pretty busy restaurant. Um, we service, like I say, between four and five, average of four or five hundred people a day. On a busy day, we'll do seven, eight hundred, sometimes a thousand. 